I'm Antonio Sala, and in this video, we will simulate the solution of the partial differential equations of this tubular heat exchanger, and we'll compare with low order models to see whether they fit reasonably well to the infinite order PDE solution with delayed terms. In other materials, we have discussed why we get this partial differential equation, and if we streamline the notation to avoid this lots of physical parameter stuff, so we write the PDE as this, we can get this solution in the Laplace transform domain, in which we get a different transfer function for each different position along the pipe. And if we replace x by the total length, and we denote as phi the residence time, total length divided by speed, then we get this Laplace transform representation of the solution to the partial differential equation. Of course, phi a, b depend on physical parameters, as shown below, so we get delay terms and other explanations as first order dynamics. This delay is infinite dimensional. We cannot write a state space representation a, b, c, d, so we'll compare with approximations, because in some control techniques we need finite order, we cannot put delays in, and in general, lower the approximations make simulations easier. We're going to plug in some physical parameters, like this. The above transfer function is valid only for constant flow. Once we plug the physical parameters in, the coefficients in the above formulas, b is this thing, a is that thing, 10.7 is the flushing time of the fluid, and the exact step response to a step in inlet temperature, when we see the outlet temperature, is a delayed and attenuated step. The exact step response to a step in heating power is just like a response of a first order system, but truncated to the value it attained at the delay time 10.7. So our goal is approximating that infinite dimensional delay solution by some simpler transfer functions to compare the accuracy of the simulations with respect to the exact solution. In some materials, we derive first order approximations to this tubular heat exchanger based on physical insight. We will now work directly in the Laplace domain, approximating the exponentials we got in the solution by some approximation. We will be based in this formula. The exponential of something minus mu, of course, we can add and subtract any beta we wish to add. Beta is any number. And we can split this exponential of a sum as a product of exponentials. This beta minus 1 goes here, and this minus beta goes there. Now this negative exponential can go to the denominator, and if I carry out, for instance, a Taylor expansion of each of the exponentials up to degree 1, we get this approximation. So when we see an exponential, we will replace by this. For instance, if beta is 0, we get this Taylor series expansion. If beta is 0.5, we get this approximation, which is called the Padé approximation of exponential. And if beta is 1, we get this third approximation, which is the inverse of the Taylor series of the inverse. But of course, we can get other approximations with beta equal 0 0.2, 0 0.8, or whatever we wish. So, as this was the transfer function resulting from the partial differential equation solution, we will understand mu as this term, which is in the exponentials. So we will plug in phi times s plus a in here, and we will get a family of approximations of the solution, depending on which value we give to beta. So this exponential gets converted to this, same for this one. And now I write one like this. 
and carrying out some operations in this transfer function. I get this expression for the heat transfer function. And in order to leave S alone, so we get the pole of the dynamics, we will divide numerator and denominator by beta phi. So we'll get this final expression. And if I now replace the physical parameters and I also multiply the heating power per unit length by the total length, so I get the total heating power Q, then I get this expression as a first order approximation of the PVE solution. Now, it's a coincidence. This expression is exactly the same as the one we derived from physical insight in other video, in which we assumed that the longitudinal temperature profile was something actually exponential. So the mean temperature was somewhere in between the inlet and outlet temperature. With beta equal 1, then this would vanish, and that will be the assumption of perfect steering or very long pipe in which the outlet temperature is basically equal to the mean temperature. But in general, it will be somewhere in between. And for instance, beta equal 0.5, just the average of outlet and inlet temperature, would mean a linear interior temperature profile. And that would be an approximation from the physical insight discussions in other materials to a short or well-insulated element. But, as I said, the important conclusion is that this blue equation obtained by approximations in the Laplace domain can equivalently be obtained in a state space form from physical insight. So this second interpretation will allow us, for instance, to use that physical-based model in simulations with changing flow, whereas the Laplace transform was obtained for constant flow. So it's better to have that physical interpretation confirming that the approximations of the exponential we have made here actually mean something in the energy balances. The true beta in order to preserve the steady state solution will be also a function of some mean temperature difference, whatever formulas in the heat exchanger that we discussed in other materials. Nevertheless, we'll review them later in order to simulate. Okay, so we have this approximation. With beta equal 1, we get this thing. So I will name it cis approx unif. With beta equal 0.5, we get this thing. So I will label it cis approx lin. And with the beta obtained from the steady state exponential profile, which is the true steady state solution of the partial differential equation, in this case, given the physical parameters, the true beta is 0.54, so it's almost the linear profile inside, and replacing all the above stuff, the formula, just uh, building the denominators and numerators of the diverse things in the transfer function matrix, then I will name that thing cis approx exp, which is the result of replacing here the beta 0.54 from the steady state solution of the PDE. However, we can have even more possibilities of approximation in the Laplace domain. In fact, the usual approximation in textbooks of the delay is this Padé approximation of it. So we are now approximating not this thing, but only the Laplace, the time-dependent component, whereas before we, we were approximating the time and space component. So in theory, as we keep here the exponential of the space component phi a, this will be a more accurate simulation. That's good, but 
in exchange we will lose the physical interpretation that the above approximation had. So there is no free lunch. This approximation cannot be used with time varying flows because there is no such flow input to the Laplace transform equations because we had some products of flows and temperatures that were not linear. Okay, so the end is that, okay, doing this, I get the Padi approximation of the time delay. So this is the fourth, first order approximation we are going to compare. Actually, as the Padi approximation is very common, MATLAB has a built-in function, Padi, to compute the above stuff. And in fact, the Padi approximation comes from this quotient expressing the exponential and the first order Taylor series gives the above expansion but if we take higher order Taylor series then we get higher order Padi approximations so for instance we can store in this sys approx Padi 3 a third order Padi approximation then we have like four first order approximations one third order approximation and of course the exact solution so let's compare things. Let's first compare this again. This is the exact solution from the partial differential equation. And we see that the beta equal one as the inside profile is not exactly the correct one in steady state, does not fit the DC gain. And the beta equal 0 0.5, again, it does not fit the DC gain because the assumed longitudinal temperature profile is not the correct one, so the energy balance are biased. We can, however, check that the PADE approximation of the delay fits correctly the DC gain, as well the third order PADE approximation as the first order approximation with beta equal 0 0.54, well, 5, 3 something, in which, of course, that value of beta was computed on purpose to match the DC gain, to match the steady state equations. So these three things match the final value, the other ones do not. If we now compare the time response, for instance, to a step in inlet temperature, well, we see that the beta equals zero uniform inside temperature or the beta equals 0.5 do not accurately fit the DC gain, the exact PDE solution, which is the, the blue delayed step, and the rest of approximations do fit the final value. And well, the transient is kind of one exponential, except this one in which we have three exponentials. It's a third order thing. I mean, the most accurate is PADE 3. If I increased the PADE order but the approximations have some kind of oscillations and then ripple here and ripple after a fast jump. So this the jump of the Padi 3 is kind of the faster jump and it keeps up and down until it jumps up. The first order approximations, of course, have just an exponential. However, the red one uniform temperature profile beta equal one is minimum phase, it's just the first order response. And the others are non-minimum phase. They start below zero and then they jump up faster to the other side of zero than the minimum phase red step response. So first order approximations of the PDE have non-minimum phase elements in this step response except beta equal one, because indeed in here, if beta equal one, then this disappears and we get just a first order system with gain and pole, as we are used to see in most introductory control lectures. And if beta is less than one, then this is a negative number. So we get a non-minimum phase component here. On the contrary, the step response on heating power in here, this one will be minimum phase. So we will have no surprises for any beta. We'll get just the step response we are used to see in our introductory control materials. 
indeed, if we look at the step response in heating power, well, we see that the uniform temperature distribution has a large bias, but the other responses more or less match the blue exact PD solution with the familiar exponential increase up to a constant of first order systems. And except this yellow thing, okay, the other ones, they match the final value with quite a good accuracy. So we'll conclude. In this video, we compared the exact solution of the partial differential equations for this tubular heat exchanger with some low order approximations. The exact solution is in theory infinite dimensional. It has delay terms. Here they are. And so it's kind of cumbersome to deal with for some control design techniques, or it may make some simulations unnecessarily complicated. Simulating a first order system is much easier. So based in this approximation of an exponential, we got this approximation in the Laplace domain of the partial differential equations solution. And fortunately, it was coincident with some other approximations based on physical insight and energy balances assuming a given exponential temperature profile in the insight. Apart from this approximation with physical insight, we could do the approximation of the temporal elements only of the delay and get theoretically more accurate solutions at the expense of losing the physical interpretation. We have simulated that thing and we have seen that the approximations of, of the transfer function whose input was in the temperature were non-minimum phase to approximate the delay except one of them, which was the less accurate one, the uniform temperature perfect steering model, and that the approximations to the step in heating power were minimum phase, just first order systems we see in introductory textbooks, and except the perfect steering model, which was severely biased, the other approximations somehow were reasonably accurate to model the steps in heating power. So in a practical application, a control engineer might decide to use this uh, first order or let's say third order approximation of the heat exchanger for simulation or control design purpose if he thinks the accuracy of these approximations is sensible for the requirements of a given application. So I finish with this. Thanks for watching.